Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Shrek Games Digital video, hopefully you've had a fantastic Christmas. It's been a merry one. You've spent time with loved ones, you've eaten more than your fair share of turkey, and fantastic gifts were found in your Christmas stockings. But despite the festive season, tech news has not dried up. In fact, a couple of very interesting pieces have popped up over the past 24 or so hours, and so we're going to be tackling them. The first one is the new Radeon cards, which from rumours we're going to be seeing launched early next year. This is actually an exclusive while it's provided further insight into what AMD are planning for these new cards, which will indeed be powered by the Vega 7nm. Currently, AMD's lineup of GPUs, at least for the consumer side for gamers, is pretty simple. You've got various Polaris-based GPUs, which of course entail the RX 570, the 580, you've got the 590, which is kind of a newer card, and you've also uh, got the Vega 56 and 64s, which compete fairly well with the GTX 1070 and the 1080, although they don't currently have anything that can take on the 1080 Ti and certainly the 2080 Ti cards. But most rumors told us, and even AMD kind of hinted, that we would not see 7nm Vega cards for the consumer, for the gamer side of the market. Instead, we would need to wait for 7nm Navi. As a quick reminder, we don't know totally what AMD are planning with Navi, although the reports are that it's going to be roughly uh, in the 250 to 300 US dollar mark, assuming those rumors continue to be accurate. AMD have said that they want to tackle the mid-range, whatever that means. The cards are going to be pretty uh, impressive in terms of raw performance, and we also have some ambiguity concerning the architecture. There's a couple of theories. The first theory is it is a continuation of the current GCN architecture, which, for example, has been found in Polaris and other such cards, but obviously it's refined every generation. The other theory is it is a Super SIMD architecture. Now, my personal opinion is that that's probably going to be Arcturus, which is the successor to Navi, and that's going to appear on store shelves at some point or another, most likely in 2020. And from what we're hearing, is going to be using the 7nm plus uh, node. But getting back to the here and now, for gamers anyway, AMD have no real answer, once again, for the higher end uh, variants of uh, NVIDIA's uh, current lineup of cards. But it's possible that they are looking to change that. There's a couple of reports recently that AMD are indeed planning a 7nm Vega card for gamers. The 7nm for data centers is apparently ta uh, tailored towards HPC. So it has various tweaks and bits and bobs to accelerate AI. We've discussed that at length before, so I don't want to go over it ad nauseum. But with the gamer side of things, the common wisdom has been that we would not see that. But once again, a couple of reports have told us that that's maybe not the case. The website WCCF Tech claims to have industry insiders who have um, provided insight that yes, Vega is coming to 7nm for gamers. They have also said a few other things which I don't agree with, such as an actual launch of the Ryzen 3000 series of processors, which I'm very dubious about. I do think that it's possible we might see an announcement and possibly the launch of certain APUs, but I don't think we're going to see a hard launch of, let's say, the 3700X or anything like that. But even so, WCCF Tech are firm, they're adamant, in that we will see some new Radeon card launch at that date. And there have been a few other whispers on industry forums and that type of thing. Now, normally I wouldn't pay so much attention to that, but there has been a couple of things that I've personally heard. The first was from uh, someone who works at a company who has very close ties to AMD. I need to be very careful what I say there because I don't obviously want to get the individual in trouble. He does not work directly with the GPU division at AMD, so he had less information than what would be ideal. But what he had been told through the grapevine is that AMD were definitely working on a new Vega card for gamers. It was going to be based on 7nm, and he knew that it was much faster than, let's say, the Vega 64, but he could not provide any actual technical details of the card. Uh, he did, however, give a whole bunch of information concerning the Ryzen 3000 series, the X570, and, well, just other stuff. You can find that 
uh, linked in the video description. Oh, and this is also a article as well, so you can check the article for this in the video description as well, should you prefer this in the text format. There has been another update concerning the Vega 7s, and yes, that's what we're apparently going to be calling them, because someone has actually written to me uh, on Facebook, so I, you know, kind of know their profile and, and all of that stuff, so I did do a little bit of checking, and I believe that they are a genuine profile. Uh, anyway, I obviously won't be giving the individual's name. Uh, but to cut a long story short, uh, according to them, the cards will indeed be launching at some point early 2019. He did not have an exact date. Furthermore, the cards will launch in a quantity of 20,000 units initially, with a great possibility of up to 40,000 more cards being launched later on, or available later on. Apparently the market is, yes, the prosumers and gamer market and not the HPC, so that does confirm, of course, it will be coming to gamers. Performance targets were somewhat ambiguous. He did not have an exact uh, number yet. It's possible it is going to be over the GTX 1080 Ti. He said it could be up to the 2080 Ti, but most likely it's going to be the middle ground between the two. In terms of pricing, it's going to be closer to the RTX 2080, possibly a little more, possibly a little less, depending on you know what the price of components is at the time of being built. And on the uh, spec side of things, all you can say is that it will most likely feature 16 gigabytes of memory, although the actual type of memory was not provided. So this, of course, automatically means that you can expect HBM2, but it's not out of the realms of feasibility and possibility that they could change the memory controller and make other tweaks to the architecture to accommodate, uh, to accommodate excuse me, GDDR6. I somewhat suspect that this is not the case, though, because it would mean that not only would they need to rework the memory control and all the other bits that I just mentioned, but furthermore, you would also gobble up a lot of the power envelope, which would be otherwise dedicated to the GPU core, because HBM2 uh, requires more, uh, sorry, requires less voltage, less energy to run. It was one of the reasons that AMD really needed HBM for uh, Vega. So my guess is that they will stick to high bandwidth memory. And in terms of the specifications, there has been no exact insight. He claims he does not know what the specifications are, but uh, what we do know is TSMC uh, with their 7nm process is about 1.25 times faster at the same power envelope. So we can certainly assume that much higher clock speeds are a good possibility. They don't necessarily have to increase the number of compute units. They could quite easily just ramp up the clock speeds of the card. And yes, that also means the high bandwidth memory as well, because we have much faster HBM2 available now. And furthermore, they could just improve the efficiencies of the Vega architecture because there were some inefficiencies there. I won't BS you though, I don't know the specifications of the card. I could certainly make some educated guesses, but they simply would be that. And I don't want me to, I don't want this video to be misquoted and say that I believe it's these specifications. I am simply telling you what I have been told. So my guess, and I'm stressing that as a guess, is that we're going to see much higher clock speeds and possibly the same number of compute units, but just a more efficient architecture. But once again, that is my guess, and I don't know the actual specifications of the card as yet. So why are AMD doing this? Well, I don't work at AMD's marketing department, and I certainly am not best buddies with Lisa Su. However, there are a couple of theories that I can come up with, and you can certainly give your own down below. The first is that this is not accurate, that all of these pieces of information have been inaccurate, and that's certainly a possibility. The second theory is that AMD feel that they just need PR at the moment. Their GPUs have been less in the news, quite frankly, than NVIDIA's, but the CPUs are doing amazing. I mean, it's hard to argue that their marketing for the CPUs has been very much helped by the fact that the CPUs just perform really well. And everyone is hyped up for Zen 2, but for the GPU side of things, it's less so. And NVIDIA are also encroaching on the mainstream side of the market as well. We've heard news, of course, and we're going to be tackling more of the RTX 2060 and other cards in a moment. That's the second part of this video. But we've heard so many rumors concerning the RTX 2060 and also the GTX 1150, whatever it ends up being called, 
1150, just as a quick reminder, has ray tracing removed. Uh, it's unclear about the tensor cores and other bits and bobs, but apparently it is still the Turing architecture by and large. The reason that could be concerning for AMD is that they have, of course, been rather happy to gobble up the mainstream sales of, let's say, the 580. And that makes sense because, you know, the GTX 1060 and the RX 580, that type of budget, 200, 300 US dollars, it's a lot easier to convince people to say, oh, here you go, 200 US dollars compared to like, I don't know, a thousand US dollars or 1200 US dollars. And yeah, there is that certainly that AMD are probably thinking of. And furthermore, it's possible that they just feel that the Navi architecture is somewhat delayed. This is just speculation on my part. The original release window for this card was supposed to be the first quarter of 2019, possibly the second quarter of 2019. It's possible, and this is just a theory on my part, that this is not the case. It's possible that the card has been delayed by, let's say, a couple of months. And they just feel that in terms of financials of the company and just getting something out into the minds of gamers, that that's the best option. It's also possible that Navi is not a compute monster. I'm not sure about that from what I've heard, but it is possible that they want Vega for that purpose, for high-end computing, for, you know, the prosumer market. But yes, of course, it's capable of gaming. And when you're talking about performance, performance is really not a great measure unless you know what performance we're talking about. Because you could say, well, this card's really great for performance, but then you're talking about compute, and in terms of gaming, it's essentially identical to the previous architecture. And if you were to look at Turing, for example, I quite like the Turing cards, but it's very hard to argue that if you've got a GTX 1080 Ti, you should upgrade to an RTX 2080 Ti, unless you really want ray tracing and maybe you want to do the whole one cable VR solution and maybe you get a great deal for the 2080 Ti and you manage to sell the 1080 Ti a really good deal. You get the idea. Uh, but, you know, 30-ish percent performance at best, in general, not that great. But if you were to look at the actual compute performance <laughs> between the 2080 Ti and the 1080 Ti, it's monumental. And also if you were to count, let's say, DLSS as well, the performance uh, gap increases drastically. So the performance of saying, well, it competes with, let's say, the 2080 Ti at best, I want to know whether that's compute orientated or whether that's, you know, gaming frame rates. So there is also that definitely to remember. And now let's move over to the RTX 2060 card, specifically that there are several different variants of them. There is the three gigabyte model, the 4 gigabyte model and the 6 gigabyte model. And these uh, models have been discovered on the Eurasian Economic Commission. Now, the models that have been found are actually gigabyte and there are 40. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to say four, I meant 40 different SKUs from gigabyte alone. And they comprise of different variants of these uh, specific layouts of cards. So you've got multiple 3 gigabyte models, multiple 6 gigabyte models, multiple 4 gigabyte models, and so on. Not only that, but we also see different memory types being used. We have GDDR6 confirmed, and there is also GDDR5, possibly X variants of the GPU as well. If I had to guess, I'm going to say it's GDDR5, but it's not been confirmed whether there are going to be some 5X uh, variants of this particular card. And then we're going to move over to the NVIDIA mobility side of things for the RTX 20 series of cards. Specifications for the 2060, the 2070, and finally the 2080 cards have actually leaked online thanks to a laptop vendor. And we have the manufacturer by the name of CG Scope, which has placed various marketing materials online uh, for the XG Lion. And these laptops are 15.6 and 17.3 inch models. Uh, you can see the specification on screen yourself. But what we do have is once again specifications of the actual GPU, which is what I'm primarily aim uh, focusing at here. 2944 CUDA cores, 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on a 256 bit bus interface. The base clock 1515 megahertz. Uh, 1847 megahertz for boost and it can go over 1860 megahertz with overclocking 
and the memory clock uh, means that we see the same bandwidth as the desktop variants, uh, 14 Gbps. As for the 2070, 23. 140 CUDA cores, once again, 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, the same bus width and uh, memory clock as the 2080. And in terms of the clock speed, 1410 megahertz and can boost up to 1740 megahertz. And finally, the RTX 2060 MXM mobility, we see 1920 CUDA cores, 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory for the desktop variants of these cards but the mobility apparently has lower cores. So we are looking at just 1536 CUDA cores, six gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and 192 bit bus. And as for clock speeds, 1320 megahertz with 1620 megahertz for the boost clock. I do wonder whether the 1536 CUDA core variants of the RTX 2060 mobility side of things is what we're going to see for the lower end SKUs on the desktop, for example, the three gigabyte models. I'm still not exactly convinced three gigabytes is enough for RTX on, uh, but of course, until we see benchmarks and other bits and pieces, it's really hard to be 100% certain of that. And don't forget, the leaks could be inaccurate, although I highly doubt it at this point. Um, but there you go. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And with that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.